how the design is very thick because we want it to absorb, we want, we want texture. So if you use a thin polish, guess what? It's gonna bleed in. So I'm just gonna draw the design first. I'm gonna go back through and put in the, um, the thickness later. One second, the kids are so loud. The kids over tonight are so goddamn loud. So, we're gonna do our sweater design first. I generally like to draw the design out first without it being too thick, just so I have a little bit more control. It's up to you, your preference really. For me, this is what I like to do. So at least I can get the design of what I like to desire. And this brush is thin enough. A lot of people will just draw it like this and they'll sprinkle powder on it. It's not gonna give you that same effect. And I'll show you guys why. There's a reason why we can't use um, regular gel polish for this. Regular gel polish, some companies are very thin if you use gel polish, definitely use a polish that's a little bit thicker. So now I have my design. I'm gonna go through and, you see how it hasn't bled out yet? That's the good news. I'm gonna go through and actually add thickness to it. You guys see that? I traced through it with more polish. I make sure I'm very, very precise. And if, if you have to do this and you, you won't have to cure in between, cure in between. If you're not comfortable with drawing designs yet and you wanna cure it, like after you do this part, you wanna cure it so you wanna protect it and do that. Cure it and do the other design. You see I'm adding more of this li the liner gel onto this. I'm not making it thicker, but I'm making it more like protrude out. See that? A little more dense. This will give me more texture later on when I sprinkle the powder. So a lot of people don't do this. They just draw the design and they sprinkle on there. It doesn't give it texture. You kind of really defeat the purpose. If you don't have the texture. Yes, you probably have to have a really steady hand for this. Hold your breath if you have to. It's still getting used to, but this is going to be the hot stuff right now. This house a lot more thick. Just take a little bit of clear powder. We're just gonna just sugar it on top of here. Now, a lot of you guys ask, oh, why don't we just do this with base coat and then just sprinkle clear over it because the base is clear. Well, actually you won't get that same texture. It won't look the same. Sprinkle a couple of times. And what this does is it allows the acrylic, the clear to absorb into that color powder and give it the texture that you want. You just cure now. So I'm gonna grab a brush real quick. So generally you want to get like a small brush like this. Um, the brush that you can use for your, uh, like when you dust off acrylic, it's too big and fluffy. You want something stiff and small because you want to get into every, all the crevices of the sweater. So generally once you dust this off, I'm gonna try to dust it into this powder. See with this brush, it gives you the ability to dust every crevice. And then now you're exposed. You have this, your sweater design. So it's just protruding out, gives that nice texture. If we were, if we were to polish this really thin, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as good as this. Um, a lot of people will do this and they will polish really thin and yeah, you run into the issue of not having the texture you need. 
So now, see the, you see the texture of the sweater? So we used the same gel polish as we, we did with the design. We matted the bottom so, of course, it didn't get stuck onto it. Look how beautiful that looks. This is with the gray. There's so many colors in this collection. of uh, My collection is 24 pieces. So it has like one brown, one burgundy, two, one medium nude, one light nude. For a lot of you guys are doing like an all nude set. These look so amazing. The down uh, blue, you should have known this. I, I showed it in class. Yeah. So any questions, now is time to ask. A lot of you just watching is fine too, but. Like, there's so many things you can do with these, uh, this design. I'll do a couple for this live, and I'll answer some questions. So the gray is nice, but one of my favorites to use is the nudes. Um, I recommend not doing uh, <laughs> black and reds. Black's actually one of the worst. This is, um, it's not, it's like, like, like an orangey nude. But I like this. I just put just a little bit on there and I'll go back through with my brush again. This is the flat brush. Flat end. I'm just gonna paint it through one thin coat. You can do two thin coat if you want, just for demo purposes. I'm not only doing one coat. Generally, I try to get a nice even coatage, but you want it really thin. Um, if you run into issues with polish not curing properly or your, your, your artist gel not curing properly because you're doing too thick. tested all my 24 set pieces um a lot of my students have used it i'm actually going to use a white later i think white's a really pretty sweater to do and the, you can go online and look up like a lot of sweater uh, designs uh sweater patterns that you can copy so of course my matte top coat this is like money back guarantee top coat matte top coat it's so nice very velvety it gives it the nice texture um just imagine like, I'll show you guys a gray one again. The reason why we don't use black, I hate doing black is because this is clear powder. It's gonna put like white lint onto it. Gray, you can't really see. White, you can't really see. Nudes, you can't really see. But black will show it up really well. But as you can see, the matte is important too. If the matte is a smooth matte, it won't give it that nice sweater texture that we get here. So now we have this done. We can go through with the same nude again. You said this is two different shades of nudes, but if I did another coat, I would have definitely buy like like a two tone. Look at this. I'm gonna do a different design this time, different pattern. This brush just is just long enough for you to work with. I mean, if you feel like you're more comfortable with an art brush, uh, like a like a ten millimeter, you know, bust one out. Just put a little bit of this polish on a palette. Saves you a lot of time when you have all these liner liners in hand already. A lot of times you have to go run and grab a gel polish. Oh, that's that's annoying. Trust me, I've been there and done that. So when you have a 24 piece set like this, you just gotta bust this out and it'll be have every color you need pretty much. So now I'm gonna do all the designs first. Like I did earlier. Then I'm gonna go add thickness later. So 
and I'm gonna go through and add a thickness. I want this to be like chain links. So not too much. Remember, if you do it too thick, it's gonna get too too bulk, bulky. Smooth out these chain links with a little bit of thickness. It's applying more gel to this, but I'm not trying to make it thicker. Like as in the width. I want the texture to be thicker. This allows more gel to absorb. You see, even though this is a gel polish base, it's a little bit more thicker than what you see in gel polish, so it doesn't bleed out, which I really like. I truly didn't even think about sweater designs with this yet. When I, when I produced this product, I was just thinking for like swirls and Frenches and stuff like that. Then when I was in class, I was like, oh, I'm gonna teach students sweater designs. And I was like, oh, let's use uh, the artist gel. And it worked really well. That line's a little fat, but I'm okay. Gonna put some circular dots here. Change up the design a little bit. Same thing that I would do with my other one, I'll take some clear powder. Take a little scooper, whatever you want to use. Scoop it on. And yeah, make sure you let it absorb. Because sometimes one coat's not good enough. You gotta keep sprinkling it on, let it absorb. You'll see when it stops absorbing. When it's like really nice and shiny it's still, that means that it's, it's, it needs more time to absorb. But probably two or three times, that's all you need. And then cure. Remember, you're done after you cured. Yeah, you can go to naildashop.com, you'll find it there. I think, I think for that price, it's very market value price for 24 set, 24 pieces of gel polish. Um, there are people that sell for $150 for only 12 pieces. So I think that's a very fair price. Once again, finished curing. Um, this little brush, actually, I have this on my website too, but you know, like I told you, anytime I sell anything, it's unused. So I gotta be very careful. That line's a little fat, I really don't like it, but. It had to be a more steady hand. So you're gonna dust as much as possible, get all the crevices out. Now you have that texture, the sweater texture. Um, you can actually go to Google and actually find like sweater nail patterns, there's so many. So we did our gray. All right, what color do you guys wanna see next? How about the viewer's choice? What color do you guys wanna see next? With a sweater design. I have a lot of colors here. Here, let me zoom out. Oh, I said I was gonna do a white. So I'll read the comment to check for a color in a second. But I told you guys I'll do a white, so I'm gonna do a white. I think white's one of the prettiest sweaters. Just uh, pink, okay. Ooh, we can do like pink hearts, heart sweater. Okay, after this white, okay. Put the white on. And I did the same thing I do all the other ones. Use my flat brush and I just paint it in. Uh, if you have white gel polish, go ahead and do that. If you're using the liner gel, you can just go and do that too. This goes on so smooth and so pigmented. You guys see that? One coat. One coat, no pun intended. Sweater coats. Light green, red. Green. So I have two greens. I have a neon green. I have a green, a light green. I can probably mix white with it. A green sweater, really, guys? You have all these pretty colors, these Tiffany blues, and you want a, a green sweater? Tiffany blues over here, pinks. I'll do pink next, actually. Ombre neon pigment powders. <laughs> well, you can't do neon pigment powders because this we're using clear powder. So our base, whatever we do, has to be in um, the, uh, the gel. So whatever color the gel reflects. I could do a base of pigment, but we're not doing pigment today. Do the Tiffany blue burgundy. 
Purple. Ooh, there you go. That was a fun color. All right, let, let me just prep this and I'll prep another, I'll prep another swatch stick. So the mat goes on really smooth. This is a rubbery mat. So we, we said pink earlier. Baby pink? Baby pink? Or pink pink? Oh, this baby pink is nice, guys. I'm just gonna slap a little bit on there. Not too much. No, this is, this is just like gel polish show. Use my flat brush, brush in the pink. I'll probably do it a little bit more pink here. It's not enough. No, I'm not gonna use that liner brush to paint this. So that's why we have our tools, our art brushes. This is a flat brush. It's very good for brushing in colors. You can see you can paint it real nice. I'm gonna mat it after it's cured. And then I'll do this white. Generally, I would, let's see. You know what I wanna do with this white? Maybe a snow. Maybe, um. Hmm. Pink or red hearts. I don't like mixing uh, colors, generally. When I do sweaters, I like keeping it one tone. I don't know, maybe it's my preference. Maybe you can probably do that too. It may look good, but um, pink with white will look nice, actually. Um, but red and pink, I don't know. They're just in the same family, kind of. I don't know. Maybe it's not my preference, but you guys can probably do that. There's the white, there it is. Let's do another white one. Ooh, I know what to do with this one. Oh, I don't want too thick. You don't want to uh, actually blend these colors in together. The worst thing you do is blend these, these colors in together. I mean, I could go back through and add more to it to get more texture, but I gotta be very careful because they're so close to each other. See that? I can actually blend them in together. They're actually pretty thick already, so I think I'm okay with it. But damn, that does look better with the more texture. All right, I'm gonna add more texture to it. It's 
got to be very careful. Oh, look how much it, like, rises, guys. Look. I'm just going to dab some polish in here. It's okay if some of them are touching, but, oh, it rises so well. This, like, this design for you guys to do in this season, you got to be careful. Because if you rush this design, it's going to come out looking like a mess. I see a lot of people fall into that where they try to rush it. Listen, this design requires time and attention. Um, you cannot rush it. All right, I'm not gonna do too much because this is gonna start getting too, I don't want to blend in and then uh, be pointless. This is thick enough for me. It's almost like a knitted, almost like your grandma knitted your, your sweater, right? This, this pattern. And it's very simple, really, right? Work slow. You like this one, yeah? Can you do this regular gel polish? Um, it depends. You know, some gel polishes are very, uh, how do I say it, uh, runny. So if you use a runny gel polish, it's not gonna stay that text, that shape and it's gonna bleed all over the place. That's one of the issues you run into with regular gel polish. The way I made this, the way I made this, uh, this product, I made it so it's, it's supposed to be like this. Like it's kind of a thick consistency, still be able to polish in. So um, if you're using like a, a gel polish that's very runny, I don't really recommend it. Be careful because it's gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna be hellish. So this one, I'm gonna dust it off. Not bad. It's kind of like your mom, your grandma just knitted you a, a sock or a sweater here or a, a hat. It's fun. Let's do one more. Um, for the hearts, I'm gonna try to use the pink to make little dots. I don't have my dotting tool here. Where the heck is it? I have to make do. Let's make some hearts. There's gonna have to be a lot of polish and Ooh, maybe that maybe that's too much. Yeah, that's too much. <laughs> There's no way I wanna drag that. So that's okay, because remember, we matted the surface, so we just gotta clean it off, and we're good to go. That's why we matte the surface, we're gonna protect it, so if we mess up, it's not too bad, we just wipe it off. So I want a nice dot, but I don't want too much there. Yeah, that's all I need there. Ooh, I put that too close. Too close. Now take my 10 millimeter out. My 10 millimeter art brush.
again. Gotta be careful not to touch my hearts. If I touch those hearts, it's gonna just bleed right over. I don't want that. But we know I gotta make this a little bit thicker here so I give it more texture. If this is regular gel polish, guess what? Those hearts are not gonna stay in shape, guys. In regular gel polish, those hearts will be gone by already. Already gone. They'll probably blend in. Ideally, I would have put, probably put those closer, but I want to give myself some space to put some dots in between here. Like I said, a dotting tool would be better here, but I don't have my dotting tool, so I just have to make do. I think that's cute enough. That's enough to make ten dollars. Just demoing. If I were to do this on a real client, I'd probably take my time a little bit more. I'm probably use my art brush dotting tool, get my hearts more even. But like I said, I'm at home, not at my studio, so I don't have that much stuff. But just show you guys how the product works. For you guys to make some money this season. No, you will never put taco on this. Never. When you're done, you're done. Please. I've seen it, okay? I've seen people do this, and then they put taco over it. It just looks terrible. Well, the moment you put top coat or even matte top coat on this, it takes away the texture. This is finished. This is what the, fi the finished look looks like. Okay, when you put it over, it takes away the texture because it makes everything blurry. I've seen it, guys, and you've probably seen it too. It's just, it does not look good. Okay, let's do a purple one. Someone said purple earlier. So here's our heart one. Not the best, but like I said, we're demoing. So how raised out it is, you can see it, the texture. I mean, this is pretty cute for like a, an all white set. Probably even do this during Valentine's Day, to be honest with you. Oh, the hearts actually turn out really well, guys. Come on, let's be honest. When does it, does it wet, does it change the colors down? Um, no, when it gets wet, it just gets a little darker, but then when it dries, it just, it gets lighter like this. It doesn't change the color. Will the color get tinted? No, the color won't get tinted. Um, this is one of those wear and tear designs, you know, um, it's, it's done like this, it just has a texture. Um, that's why I stay away from like um, red. Uh, I stay away from blacks and any color that will show up like lint and stuff like that. It's very hard. But someone said purple earlier. You guys want like a dark purple? This is a purple. Ooh. Ooh. I like this. There's another purple here. It's called Macron purple. Hello? This is like a little bit darker. And the set comes with 24 colors, so pretty much every color you need for any situation you need. Um, the polish itself is, pretty, as you can see, it cures really well. I know a lot of you guys have had horror stories with this product. This is why I didn't launch this product when it first came out. Um, I, I tested it first, make sure I see any issues with it in the market. And one of the biggest issue was curing. So I made sure that I tested it, make sure that it cures and you know, the companies make their adjustments, but. Ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> we have to do a blue. We have to do one of these, uh, this green right here. Oh my God, guys, this green. It's called Macron Green. Huh? <gasps> huh? 
that coverage, right? Very thin. This is why this, this, this polish is not like a regular gel polish. Because I'm just like you. I would want products that work really good too because I use this stuff too, okay guys? <laughs> Look at the coverage. It's one thin coat. You'll never have issues with gel polish curing again. I got a little powder on here. I need to probably need a little bit more of this macaron. Where's that? Where did I put it? There it is. It's a little bit more because I had a little bit of powder on the brush there and it made it all streaky, but. This is, this is like an aquamarine color. Ugh, I love this. Very thin. So I'm gonna matte this purple here. Oh, yes. I'm trying to see what I wanna do. Ooh, look at this purple. Woo! Child. one two just have it ready remember you have to matte top coat this um, I recommend a matte that's more rubbery than shiny because you want it, you want as much texture as possible there's a lot of matte that gives you kind of like a smooth surface I don't like that when it comes to designs and stuff like that um, that's why I made my matte the way it is yes I'll probably start selling my matte in bulk like it's in like a deal but until then Where's that purple? Okay. Hmm. This one, I almost want to make it like. Oh, this one's going to be pretty, guys. <laughs> this one's going to be pretty. I'm just like, there's like templates out there you can look at different sweater designs, but I'm just going to freestyle some. November to, to January up until February, these designs are going to be very hot and popular. Make sure you have the right products to do this, okay? A set like this will get you make your money back tenfold some kind of all the other ones I've done like really, really like in sync. This one I'm gonna do a little bit thicker and I'm gonna do it a little bit more like off center, perfectly done. And lot I'm gonna add a lot more polish to this one. Just to fill in these gaps. This huge space I have here. Don't dink, dump this in there either. You have to sprinkle it on. Because no, this is gel polish. If you stick this, this thing into the clear, that's what it's going to do. The gel polish is going to move and you're going to regret it. <laughs> Don't be that person that's like, oh, I just took all that time and did that design and I just slammed it in there and look at it. Here. Just any clear powder will work. I just absorb. I 
I'm glad I'm getting in trouble for using all the matte polish at work. Definitely trying this tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Let's see that. I'm trying to think what I want to do with this one. Sometimes you just run out of ideas. Oh, I know what this one I'm gonna do. See how I'm laying on thick, but still the polish not moving. You do have to have a bit of a steady hand for these these designs, guys. So hold your breath. Like I said, if you can't use this, use a, a liner brush, just put the polish on a, a palette, or a palette tray. Yeah, I mean, eventually you'll start running out of ideas and you just freestyle stuff. But there's plenty on the internet right now, plenty of ideas. So I did this really thick, I make sure it soaks in. I'll take one more request before we end this. So, hey, maybe we should do something crazy. It's the purple. Remember, you gotta make it a little thick so it's raised out. Oh my goodness, I almost dropped my wine. One more request. You guys want to see what happens if I use black? How about that? Look at my beautiful, it got squashed. <laughs> All right, actually, yeah, I'll show you guys what happened with black. Why we don't use black. This one's so cute though. This one's so cute. Wish I didn't mess this one up. <sighs> Snowflake. Butterflies. Rainbow. The thing about that is I'm not, if I was sprinkling color powder, it would, I can do ombres and different colors, but I'm not, I'm sprinkling clear powder. So I'd actually have to, have to do the design with, I'd have to do like a gel marbling blending with different colors, which, you know, you're nailed that. You can do this, right? You know what? Fuck it. Let's go, let's try it. Let's do, <laughs> um, I'll do it on top of a white so it pops up more. I'm gonna attempt this, I, I, I've never done this before, so bear with me. You guys want this ombre, so different color pattern. It's either gonna look very amazing, and I'm gonna like, wow, or it's gonna look okay. I think it's not gonna look, look hideous. So 
So I wanna do white because I wanna have a nice white background for my vibrant colors to show through. Oop, I got a little blue in there. Rainbow. Okay, okay. So, let me math this. Wow. This would actually be a fun one to do. That's a good one to end with. Multicolor, huh? You guys make me work. <laughs> I hope this turn out, guys. I really do. Okay. I'm going to do this pattern, but I'm going to do rainbow. Like, different color. Ombre. So... Let's put the clear on the side. Let's do blue. It's a good blue. Oh no, actually I wanna do it. Oh. Let's do all, let's do these three blues. This is the dark one too. Dark blue too. That's way too dark. That's like navy. Okay. So dark one first. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. I'm just gonna leave these out for now. So I have them ready at hand, in hand. You guys, you're making me work. I'm just gonna do the design first, then I'll go through and blend it in later. This is a lot of work, guys. I have to charge my client a lot for this. Strangely, this might come up really, really pretty. You never know. The thing is, I have to do this really thick beforehand. I can't do it thin. This, this uh, style would probably be easier if you did just like clear polish and then using um, color powder and sprinkle it on or pigment powder. Doing it with the gel seems kind of crazy, but we're doing it anyway.
So with the line, I had to go down halfway. Actually, I'm gonna go out to the studio tomorrow and try to perfect this. I'll do a couple samples and post it for you guys. Yeah, this definitely, this, this technique will work better with, you had pigment powder, but you can see how the two-tone will look great if it's, once it's, if it's done right, three-tone. A tie dye sweater. All right, I guess we won't know until we finish up with the, the clear, right? I can see a way to do this tomorrow. I think I'm gonna go to the studio and figure this out. You guys are challenging me now. Let's cure it and see what it looks like. Okay. All right. With some of this. So this set comes with 24 pieces, 24 colors. A lot of them are like um, different shades of each other. So good for you guys to do monochrome. There's actually a lot I can do with this. But today I only show a sweater. In the future I'll show some other stuff for those of you guys who bought it. Most of my students already have this. So that's why I'm doing a demo for them. Because I know they want to see it. See it, see it, see it. So let's see what we got done so far. We got a few, few nice sweaters here. Probably my favorite pattern is this gray one. If this teal one didn't mess up, the white one's actually nice, like a knitted. Ooh. It's not bad. Get your sweater weather. Sweater's ready for the season. And I'm gonna dust this one off real quick. With my little mini duster. You can probably get this too on the website. Yeah, not too, ooh, I like that. Not bad. It's 
not bad. I mean, if I would have done like one color halfway, do the other color midway, and the other color to the end, that'd be nice too. There's a few ways you can do that. Like I'll draw everything in dark blue, then I'll continue with the light blue in this mid area and then dark blue. So. You're deaf, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. Um, you can find this on, oh yeah, the dark green color is nice too. Uh, you can find this on naildadshop.com, the price is on there. How much you allow to cure? 30 seconds, really, because this cures pretty fast and, the, and with the gel soaked up, 